Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is the Scarborough Rouge River one and only candidates debate for the provincial election to the Ontario Legislature. This is the cartoon I use in my Elections of Ontario. And you see me, the organ grinder, and you have the monkey with the let's disc, and you have the sysop at the Bank of Canada, or even the Bank of Ontario. I could set up that database too. And then you have your party leaders with the question is, who would you vote for? The monkey with the interest-free let software to install at the Bank of Canada to give you an interest-free credit card? Or the three candidates who don't even have a program? Ha <laughs> ha! Onward we go to some boring stuff. So here we go, this should be pretty boring. To begin, each candidate will be given one minute for their opening statement, while at the end of the program, they will be given 30 seconds for their closing statements. During the question period, each candidate will be given 30 seconds to answer, and after that, each person has answered. The floor will then be open for discussion. Ooh, that's after dangerous. Which we will proceed to the next question where the process is repeated. It also should be noted that candidate Arya Kaczynski will not be participating in the debate this evening. Too bad that we made 11. And the candidates have all been seated alphabetically. The first one to give their opening statement this evening is Raymond Shaw. Good evening. Hello, my name is Raymond Shaw. I'm the Ontario PC candidate. I have served the people of Scarborough for the past 25 years as city councillor. And because of this, I know the challenges the people of Scarborough Rouge River face. They face uh, skyrocketing hydro bills, Things are bad. cuts to the Ontario health care, and are bad. Uh, very little job opportunities, Things are bad. Uh, and the chance in this, they have never been met by the Liberal government. Nothing uh, done. By uh, theirs either. Uh, actually has happened after being represented by the Liberals last 13 years. During these by-elections, the voters, you will have the opportunity to send a strong message to cast <laughs> me. We are tired of ignoring. When I'm elected as your MPP, I will continue to work hard for Scarborough, and I will hold the Win River accountable. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Priyan De Silva, you are next. Thank you. Thank you for having this debate. My name is Priyan De Silva. I am running under the Green Party of Ontario platform. We are working on three issues, food security, energy independence, and a basic income. We should have them all. <laughs> we are using the, the community mobilization aspect of that uh, to ensure we transition to a just and environmentally friendly community. We all breathe the same air, we all drink the same water, and we all eat the same food. So go out there and vote for Green. Thank you very much. And he'll ensure much. things. And next we have Dwight McLean. Thank you as well. Well, it's uh, with, regarding the party, it's the People Political Party of Ontario. And it's about the uh, people versus the politicians uh, campaign 2016. I'm here because of, of our children and, and their future. Because uh, what we realize is that children are now being caught up in uh, values of delinquency, delinquent acts. And what I, I find is that the people are still struggling to make ends, just make ends meet, right? So then the three levels of government, their official uh, elected candidates, what we notice now is that they no longer look after the needs of the common folks any longer. So now, with, with that in mind, the People's Political Party, which is the people themselves, when once elected, what we will do, fight against poverty, uh, what the platform also stands for is children's Fight against rights, poverty. And as well as health care, infrastructure, as well as uh, traffic congestion and, and... And that's time. Okay, great. Okay. Lots of good Nathan stuff Shen, we should do. Are... Thank you. Hi, I'm Nathan Shen. I'm the NDP candidate in this by-election. I live in Scarborough Rouge River. I am with my wife and two children, raising my family there. I also work in Scarborough Rouge River. Um, so I understand the everyday struggles our families go through in their writing. Uh, Kathleen Wynne and the Liberals have been ignoring Scarborough for far too long. There have been a number of promises made and none of them have been kept. Uh, we, we are tired of being ignored, we are tired of being left out. And uh, this election is about Scarborough getting the respect back. Um, I will be a fighter, I'll be a fighter at Queen's Park, fight for lower hydro bills, fight for lower uh, insurance, uh, 
and, and fight for the subway to be built. Uh, instead of having discussion over discussion, have the subway project to start now. I'll also be fighting to make sure we have a healthcare system that we all can count on, our families can count on. So on September 1st, when you have that choice, please send Kathleen with a strong message that she can't ignore. Vote for me, Nathan Shan, the NDP candidate in Scarborough Roots River. Thank you. And Wayne Simmons, you are next. Um, the Freedom Party, uh, I represent the Freedom Party uh, of Ontario and Scarborough Roots River. And the purpose of government, the Freedom Party believes, and I believe, is that that uh, the only purpose of government is to protect your life, liberty, and property, and not restrict your choices. That is what we believe, and our position is that uh, what they believe. government <laughs> is only uh, purpose is to protect life, liberty, Hold and property, and has a monopoly on uh, lawmaking. And that's the position of the Freedom Party of Ontario. Uh, Horvath, um, Wynne, and Brown all are anti-freedom and anti-choice. They want to restrict your choice in health care. They want to restrict your choice in education. They want to restrict your choice in energy. Kathleen Wynne's policy, McGinty's policy, and Brown would continue it, is to fight climate change. If you want to stop this uh, ineffective method of fighting man-made, uh, not man-made, but really just natural climate change, okay. don't vote for any of the major parties. Vote for Wayne Simmons' Freedom Party of Ontario. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I think it's a hoax, too. Thank you. Hello, I'm Alan Small, the leader, the Libertarian candidate and leader of the Ontario Libertarian Party. We're the fifth largest party in Ontario and the fastest growing. Why? Because we're the largest party that advocates lower hydro bills, lower taxes, no carbon tax, oh, we all a better education that. system, oh, yeah. and a better, fast, and better faster health care for all. Advocating all those good things. Well, they're possible if you make the right choice on September the 1st. A vote for Alan Small is a vote against the four larger parties that are virtually identical to one another. To prove my point, Mr. Cho over there expressed, has been either a, uh, expressed interest or has been a candidate for the NDP, the Liberals, and now the PCs. Nothing will change if you vote for me, but you will have made your voice heard against this Liberal government, the most corrupt in my lifetime. This is your chance to make a real change in Ontario politics. Nothing will change if you voted for him, but make a real change. My name is Farrah Galtero, <laughs> and I'm your Liberal candidate. I'm not, from many of you watching at home, my face may not be very familiar, and I'm not a professional politician. I have been working in this community for a very long time, making people's lives better. And over the last two weeks, I have also been working very hard, talking to people, speaking to thousands of folks at doors, talking. who shared, I, whose concerns I share. And whose stories I also share. 25 years ago, I came to this country as a refugee from Sri Lanka with my family, and we started our lives in this community in a small apartment across Nielsen Park. Today, I'm a transportation planner. I'm a, someone with public service experience for over 15 years, and I want to serve this community. I want to be your next MPP so we can protect the values that have allowed my family and many of yours to come to this country and flourish, and I want to protect the progress we've made together. I want to be your next MPP so I can be in government advocating for the necessary infrastructure and in health care, education, and transit. So I ask for your support. Thank you. Transit planner should have some math. I wonder if he catches on to what I say next. John Turmel. I'm known as John the Engineer Turmel, and smartestmanonearth.ca is my website where I have my video to the Ontario students last time explaining I have a grade 17 in science and four years as teaching assistant of Canada's only mathematics gambling course so I got systems engineering and using math to pick winners my specialty closest education to Mr. Spock on the planet now my site has this graph which shows you Ontario's debt that started in 1974 and it has Canada's debt that started in 1974. And debt service, what happened? Pierre Trudeau shut down the interest-free loans from the Bank of Canada to the province of Ontario, forced us to borrow from private banks and tax us to pay the interest. Over the years, that's two trillion for Canadian taxpayers over 40 years, 70 grand a piece. What we need is interest-free loans, interest-free Bank of Canada accounts, where you log on, open an account, Pay all your interest-bearing debts below, and that's after that, time. all payments go against principal. Someday you're out of debt. John, so that's I can time. So I get the seventy grand back. For John, you. that is time. Thank you, Queenie. You. Thanks, 
Cynthia. I'm Queen Yu, the independent candidate. I lived in Scarrow for 20 years, have an MBA, did fundraising and marketing. I'm running to make sure that MBA. one important issue gets attention, wins sex ed curriculum. Last year, the Liberals, supported by the NDP, introduced a sex ed curriculum that teaches graphic things to children at too young an age. In grade six, children learn about masturbation. In grade seven, anal and oral sex. Now, if I've made you even slightly uncomfortable, imagine how children feel when they're listening to this in the classroom. No matter who wins this by-election, the Liberals will still have a majority government. Now is the chance to send a message to all parties, to the Liberals and the NDP, they will not have your vote in 2018 because they support the sex ed curriculum. To the PC party, they will have your vote only if Patrick Brown promises to eliminate the curriculum. Vote for Queen EU, independent candidate. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, none of the above. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Hello. I am candidate above the none of the. I have legally changed my name to be Mr. None of the Above. And this time around, I'm running with the none of the above party. So. The None of the Above Party believes in the three R's of direct democracy. They believe. Referendum, recall, and responsible government. So no $16 orange juices for me. What I'd like to see this time in this by-election is if you think all politicians are the same, if you're the kind of person who says, I'm tired of voting, it doesn't make a difference, you can make a difference. Help me help you make that difference. A vote for the Liberals is just a drop in their majority bucket. If they get another member, they still have a majority, they have one more for it. If you elect a PC or an NDP, they'll lose every vote by one less every time a motion comes up. They'll feel a little better, they'll say they're building momentum, but it won't actually make a difference. Voting for none of the above, and my ideas and my views on customer service will make that difference. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. And now we will begin our a great question of production of the debate. Each candidate will be given 30 seconds to respond, followed by discussion. So the first question, well, it's inevitable that we would come to the topic of the Scarborough subway extension. It has dominated Toronto politics for the past several years. The current plan is a compromise, a one-stop express to Scarborough Town Centre that will cost $3.4 billion dollars. That's an estimate at this point. It's funded, but it also relies on the second part of the plan, which is extending the LRT along Eglinton to the U of T Scarborough campus. However, that is not funded, and it is expected to cost $1.5, $1.7 billion. So my question to each of you is, do you agree with this current plan, and how would you ensure that the LRT would actually get funded? Raymond Show, I'm going to start with you, and then we will continue along this way. Yes, uh, the, basically I agree that plan, and I voted that plan, because uh, Scarborough does need the survey, and the original plan is to get the survey up to Shepard and Macon. We didn't get that. We missed one survey station to support the, the LRT that comes to the Scarborough campus. Uh, now we have a plan, but uh, the so Justin Trudeau, our Prime Minister, says the most important thing is the infrastructure building. So I'm sure that the... Uh, That's time. Thank you very much. And next, Priyanka Silva. Thank you. The one-stop Scarborough subway station does not help Melbourne, the northern northeast part of Scarborough. Um, it, do, it does need to be extended and, and more uh, different types of... Uh, of transit must be included for Scarborough. The way we pay for it is uh, through uh, suggestions from other uh, organizations such as the land value tax, such as uh, uh, congestion taxes, uh, such as parking levies. These are things that the City of Toronto is also looking into. Thank you. Dwight McLean. More taxes. As both these candidates have already expressed, uh, Scarborough North does need uh, additional transit system. I'm a transit, uh, I'm a, I, I commute with transit, I drive also. And I find that there's a lot of overcrowding on the, on the buses as well as the LRT. And in, in canvassing in my, in my uh, ward there in uh, Scarborough North, some of the uh, constituents were actually saying that it needs more to come more north, like up to the zoo even. And what I find with, with, with donations, we can, we, can, we can build on donations, uh, accept donations as part of the infrastructure to help. That's time. We can carry on this conversation uh, in the Thanks, Cynthia. This discussion has gone on for too long. I think the project is already approved. The city council has voted for it. Scarborough has clearly spoken in favor of subways. 
it needs to happen. It needs to happen right now. It needs to, the shovel should be on the ground soon. As a fighter, as a person who is always fighting for uh, rights, human rights, and as for uh, you know services, I'll be fighting for subway to be built immediately. I also think the Scarborough for a subway. should come north from Scarborough campus to Melbourne. The, the resource question is because we haven't had a fight. A Kathleen Wynne has been ignoring Scarborough as an MPP. I'll fight to make sure that attention comes to Scarborough. Wayne Simmons. Yeah, um, the, um, the issue I, I have with this whole uh, issue is that uh, all these uh, different areas are chronically underfunded. And the reason why they're chronically underfunded is that, uh, again, it's, it's uh, centralized control. Everything is done by the premier's office. And all these MPPs have to go to the premier. No, get it's underfunded because uh, it's not enough again, money. Again, if uh, if there was a way of actually getting away from this collect uh, this uh, planning model and moving towards self funding or uh, self -funding. areas where taxes are, are collected at source. Uh, more taxes at source. I'm against the discovery of uh, subway. A couple of years ago, a new company called Uber came to uh, this part of the world, and Uber offers better transit, uh, cheaper transit. Uh, no government involvement, so there's no need for uh, increasing taxes. And, and what I'd like to see is Uber being given a chance to have Uber-like buses. I think the Scarborough Subway, the Scarborough Subway has been around since I was a student. Uh, and I was a student in Scarborough. So we're talking a very long time. Metrolinx has a 25-year plan to get and, the Scarborough that's Subway. Time. That's time, I'm sorry. Uh, Piragol Piru. <coughs> As a transit planner, I know the value and importance of good transit infrastructure projects, oh, yeah. and that's what good. I want to push the envelope on. We're, I'm pleased to see the subways getting built finally, but what's important to remember is that we need to continue to provide network and faster we options for people to commute within Scarborough and also to downtown where they need to. So it's not just it's not going to end with the Scarborough subway. In fact, that's just the beginning. And as a transportation planner, I certainly plan to take this concern forward in government and, and represent and the needs of Scarborough with respect to transit infrastructure. John Chamel. Gee, where will you get the money to fund it? Before 1974, you could have borrowed it from the Bank of Canada interest free. All you got to do is open up that window again, dummies. Queenie, you. <laughs> you at rush hour, how many happy faces do you actually see? Um, I grew up in Scarborough. I've experienced transit problems firsthand, specifically how underserviced they are in northeast Scarborough. On top of it all, Scarborough Rouge River will not be connected to the new subway, so commute times to downtown will continue to be long. If elected, I will work with local city councillors and the government of Ontario to make sure that northeast Scarborough gets better transit solutions. Thank you. None of the above. It's, well, it may turn out that the one-stop subway is a good thing for Scarborough because it will be more like an express line. So once you can get people at least to the start, it will get them downtown quicker without extra stops. And this does not have to be the end of the subway just because that's where it stops now. It should have been there years ago. We should be continuing to build the subway further out north of the city and throughout the province, and we're trying to work on that now, and I would be supporting that. And at this time, perhaps we can use for funding some of the carbon tax credits using transit in the subway, that can offset the cost, and you can show how that would help the federal government. Carbon tax credits. That is time. I'm going to open up the floor now to discuss transit issues further. Who wants to begin? You know, there aren't too many candidates who call the voters dummies. <laughs> I wonder how I'll do. Yeah. They, we don't have a subway transit uh, in Scarborough, mainly because it is a provincial liberal government. You know, each time there's an election, they probably say we're going to bring subway. After election, nobody mentioned anything, nothing. You know, that, uh, uh, actually, this uh, Shepherd Survey line, uh, LRT line, all this money, the world government shifted to the uh, Finch LRT. So there's uh, no money for the uh, uh, Shepherd line. And uh, if uh, no money. Uh, we didn't have a mismanagement, <laughs> we could build the subway the at least. Uh, Shepard and uh, the McCown, but I, I have to uh, criticize the Liberal, and that's why I'm running to become MPP and bring the survey to Scarborough, and that's my plan, and the, what the, that's what the PC leader, Patrick Brown, he promised. Nathan was up first, so go ahead, and he, feel free to jump in respectfully. Thank Nathan. you, Councillor Cho, for your service, but Scarborough needs a fighter. Scarborough needs a voice that can consistently get things delivered. 
I live in the riding. For me, if the subway is built, it will save me one hour every day. That's two. I have two children, five-year-old and two-year-old. I would have one extra hour with them. I would be able to do recreational activities. So it's not a one-stop subway. It's actually one hour of my daily life. And that's the reality for Scarborough residents, and that's why I'm supporting that. Nathan will be 50 years old by the time this subway is finished, I guarantee. And he'll be thinking about retirement. An Uber-like bus system will be the best idea. No tax, no tax raises, and it, it's, it's, you know, you're talking about something that has gone on and on and on and on, and it will continue to go on. Well, I can tell you, as a transportation planner, I spend time advocating politicians to better to have better infrastructure investments, particularly in transit. Better investments. Our Greater Toronto area, including Scarborough. <laughs> And we know that through that type of advocacy, the Liberal government was the for first to the table in 2013 and announced that funding uh, for Scarborough Subway. And we're finally seeing it getting built, and I'm glad. But as I said earlier, I think what's important to remember here is that we need to make sure that it's not just the subway. Subway is, in fact, just the beginning for Scarborough. We need to continue to build on that infrastructure to make sure that communities like Morningside Heights, Malvern, we need to, we need to. And that it's done in a context-sensitive way, that oh, it, it be developed and planned and, and implemented in a way that fits the needs of our communities. But in you have way, to have somebody inside government putting that need forward and not in the sidelines just fighting at the putting government the need just, forward. You know, saying fancy stuff in the media. So you have to have a voice in the government who has knowledge and experience, and I do, as, as a planner of transit services, I have that experience. And I've seen in York Ridge in the last 10 years that they've done three huge infrastructure projects. Two of them are in operation already. One subway is getting extended to, to Bonn. That's the type of investments we need. That's the type of champions you need to find investments. To stand up for Scarborough. And how and much interest are you going to pay on those investments when you could go to the Bank of Canada in the old days? You're going to tax us to pay interest when you really don't have to? We have a government, we have <laughs> an Ontario Liberal government and the federal Liberal government that's working together. Oh, in yeah, fact, working yesterday, together. And yesterday millions, millions were announced for, to fund public transit, and a large portion of it is coming from And how much so interest are you going to pay for me. those millions? Please don't interrupt. Let him finish his thoughts. So this is I an you say we could debate here. This, we can debate, but this, let's, let's give I each other a... my question by the time you, you jumped on me. This is the opportunity to, to... There's governments that are focused on infrastructure. If we don't stand up for Scarborough now, and have somebody inside the government putting those concerns forward and bringing those necessary Begging infrastructure, for investment. In, infrastructure to Scarborough, <laughs> then we're, on, we're losing our for Scarborough. Yeah, Wayne for Simmons, investment. you wanted to yeah, step in. The problem is, is that there's, uh, all of these areas are chronically un, uh, uh, underfunded. Right. The reason why they're Bingo. chronically underfunded is you have all these various groups, uh, various, uh, especially downtown Toronto, wanting everything done by, the, by for them. I mean, I can see the Toronto money. Transit Commission, the Trotsky Transit Commission, in many ways, because it's just Need the, more the central plan mo uh, model. Uh, hard Moscow. I mean, let's see, Hard Moscow. I mean, was running it. It's called the Red Rocket. I mean, you can't find more something more communist than that. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, there should be competition with the government model. The difference between myself and libertarians is I believe that we should have a competitive model with public models if people choose, and we should have rebates, uh, basically, uh, taxes back. To the uh, to the citizens we that they can actually that. they actually get take their own money and then put that money towards what we they want. And a bureaucracy to do it with. Just, yeah, like, you you want you want to get rid of all government? Years, no, years, I don't. Yes, you do. Few years back, there was another by-election in Scarborough, and the Liberal candidate promised to be a subway champion. When there's a by-election in Scarborough, the Liberals and the candidates claim to be champions for subway, champions for job. When they do get elected, they don't speak up, they become backbenchers, they don't speak up, Tell articulate the fight. needs of Scarborough, and they don't get anything done for us. And that's why people are tired. We need respect for the needs that we have, and that's why the people want to have Kathleen Wynne sent a strong message this time. Here all, that's a I, shot at the Liberals. I think that the key difference here is, is I have been working in this community, and I'm advocating for better transit right across the region, including better. Scarborough. And by voting for me, you're sending a transportation plan with we want knowledge, more. with experience. And also, as somebody who's been involved look in for investments. Time, I have the ability to bring the other federal partners, the this municipal the partners, to the, the table, to the table to get, to, 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 if you don't mind, please don't interrupt, whoa, to whoa, the whoa. table <laughs> to get the job done. That's what we need. We need somebody who can collaborate with other lawmakers. Please we don't interrupt in the debate. People to the table. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what we need, but you can't deliver it. Everybody agrees we need all this great stuff, not tell us how to do it, not that we need it. Right? I, I, we need this, we need that, we need this. Hey, how? You ain't got no money. You gotta go borrow. 
Now, ridership has been going down and down or, or staying flat for years in Toronto, and people are just walking away from transit and heading for cars. And why is that? Because the TTC is not going to get better well, the more I, money you throw at it. It's just going to go up and up and more, ex become I, I more expensive. I will argue on that point. Ridership has been going up, although <laughs> yes. it's flat. No, it has It's flat. Yes, it has, sir. I, I yes. think the acronym for TTC is, stands for Take the Car. Yeah, so. <laughs> With, with, with that in mind, right? what, what I think should happen actually, it should be placed, these decisions should be placed in the hands of the people themselves. Why? Because if anybody has the knowledge to do something properly for themselves, it would be you. So why not let the people decide for themselves? They're not looking for politicians to do that. You think? Yeah. If you want it done, if you want something done, if anyone wants want something done, put a bridge over right? here, right? A company that knows what they're doing, what they're at, precisely, they, they can make a profit on it. Precisely, the TTC will never make a profit. It's always just you might as well just throw money on it. And That's there are it. many many people in our community who can actually make those decisions for themselves. It's not rocket science. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Priya, Let's actually, have a I'm going to give Priya the last word before we move on to our next question. Priya, thank you very much. Uh, let's have an honest debate about this. Uh, there's two things about this where, where there's accessibility and affordability. And I live in Malvern. And the people I work with, they're concerned about affordability, even though we have no accessibility through, through needs. We have to have a serious conversation on how we're going to fund these projects. Gee, Nobody Bank of Canada is just that, out of his brain. Well, I did. How come Uber is cheaper than well, taxi cabs? How do they do that? Thank you. So we have to really understand that we're in a situation where we're able to use uh, the, the transformative change of, of, uh, of our energy systems to introduce better public transit, something that we as Torontonians and people in Scarborough Rose River will be proud of, and we do have to pay for that. Okay, I'm going to end this discussion. Let's, <laughs> let's move to another topic. The question for each of you, and we will start with none of the above and go this way, as you each have 30 seconds to respond before we open up the debate again. What would you do to battle the rising cost of electricity? It's certainly not just a Scarborough issue, it's a provincial issue, but we can focus on Scarborough. None of the above. Yes. Well, first of all, I think it's a mistake for us to be selling off Ontario Hydro. And if our own report came back and said it would cost us a billion dollars a year if we sell it off, we'll be losing out on the money we could be making just to take a quick cash grab right now in order to pay for some promises. So, I think we should buy back those shares. If we want to run the province like a business and the Conservatives would like to run it like a business, will you buy back the shares that have been sold now to bring Hydro One back into the public view? Queenie, where do you get the money Ontario to buy back the shares? Rates keep going they up, spent it and part all of the reason for that is the so-called green energy policies of the Liberals. Uh, my parents live in Scarborough, they've spent most of their life working in factories and restaurants, and they've had to find ways to save money uh, because they've never had much of it. They're retired now, but they only do their laundry and mow their lawn at certain times when the electricity rates are lower. Uh, that's because they wouldn't be able to afford their electricity bill otherwise. So if we get rid of the green energy policies, and I do agree with none of the above that that's we should uh, not that's sell so Hydro One. John Trumel. You know, in 1993, North York Hydro issued $25 hydro bonds that you could use to pay for your hydro. And they were too stupid to pay their employees with them because everybody in the country would have taken them, in the province. In Argentina, they did it right. The union said, no layoffs. You're going to pay us with small denomination government bonds we can use for hydro taxes, medical, and licenses. Five years later, they had no foreign debt. And it didn't make the news. So I just told you we could do the same. Paragraph here. Talking, talking to many at the door, I share this concern with folks. And what's important to remember is government has introduced programs that help people with financial assistance that help pay oh. the bills. And the that's borrow important. money to we help to make people. Sure we focus some attention on that. But let's remember here, we have a, a hydro grid that is cleaner and more reliable. Remember that we, the Liberals took this over from the previous Conservative government, a dirty system, an unreliable system, and have turned that around. What's important here is that we provide assistance through those targeted programs to those that need help to pay the bills. And that's important. Alan Small. Not all the those, government but... caused problem. In 2009, they came in with the Green Energy Act. We would repeal the Green Energy Act, end time of use billing, set a price for hydro that's competitive with Manitoba, Quebec, some of the American states that are around it, because manufacturing is leaving Ontario in droves because they can find cheaper electricity 
in other places. And will subsidize too, hydro I so they don't leave. With Queenie. I'm home too, a large part of the day. And that's and time, sir. Wayne Simmons. The cost of uh, the cost of actual energy, well, wholesale production of energy in this province is only two to three cents per kilowatt hour. We have a global adjustment of about eleven cents, and the reason why we have a global adjustment of about eleven cents is because the uh, McGinty Win Liberals and the Conservatives who would, who also want to fight climate change because they say it's a real problem and we must fight climate change. Well, climate always changes. Hello, <laughs> and just bring an umbrella if it Hello. rains. I mean, we always we we do that. But the reason that it's thirteen point five cents, we, need, need we are being bankrupt by these governments. Taxes. Thank you. Cynthia, during the time uh, Kathleen Wynne has been Premier, the peak hour rates have gone up 50% in, in Ontario. Uh, that's totally unacceptable. You know, I met a family not using air conditioning, not using dishwasher or TV, and still paying about $400 per month for hydro. This is absolutely ridiculous. And this needs to change. We will take off HST from the hydro bills. We will stop the hydro wine sales. It, has, it needs to be stopped. The research has shown it. It needs to be stopped. And the the province needs to run it in a way that, that the communities get a break. A and this way, government is yes. not going to do it because Kathleen Wynne is so removed from the reality. Just run it in a way. I haven't got extensive knowledge on this, but I know at one point it was like five cents per kilowatt hour uh, a few years back. However, I know that there are many people who are actually diverting from using power at certain times of the day and night and whatnot. And I find like the people who actually themselves are complaining about this. It's exorbitant. It just keeps going up and no one's doing anything about it. It's not for me to do anything about it. It's what the people themselves want. It's how they want to rectify the situation. It's not, it's not for any one of us in this room. It's for the people themselves to do something about it by monitoring the situation themselves. Because okay, people are going to time. tamper with... That's time. Priya de Silva. <laughs> Thank you. A mob uh, is supposed to do something. Energy infrastructure. Uh, the greenhouse gases are causing extensive damage. Uh, to start, uh, we Making must plants shut down the faster. particular power plant in 2018 when, when, it when the license expires. Uh, and and uh, this will create more opportunity jobs and also district energy systems which will uh, give energy independence to each of our communities uh, where we can uh, utilize renewable energy which is much more safer and healthier for us all. Raymond Chow. Carbon ain't so bad. Yes, uh, this uh, rising hydro bill is a real job killer. After 13 years of government, now 350,000 manufacturing jobs are gone because of high, uh, sky rising hydro bill. 36,000 jobs are gone last, uh, last month or one month alone. When you look at the donation to the political party, liberal party, 99% of the company who made the donation, and they get the green energy country. We stop this green energy country unnecessary one. That is time. I'm going to open up the floor now. I agree with Mr. Cho, uh, and by the way, the price of Ethan has gone up 100 percent from May 2009 to May 2016, 100 percent. So the peak energy price in May 2009 was nine cents a kilowatt hour. Now it's 18 cents a kilowatt hour. That's 100 percent. I, I, I was talking about the time Kathleen Wynne has been premier. That's in the last few years. It's gone up. Well, the, yeah. the, the, I mean, the, the liberal power since 2003. You're, you're right. So we're talking 13 years. But what's important to remember here is that the liberals, when they took power, I remember this. We remember the blackouts, the brownouts. The power was so unreliable. That was having its own impact on our personal lives. It was having impact on our industries. It was important to make sure that that you know the previous conservative government have kept ignored the infrastructure in the hydro and just kept prices artificially low just to for the, to protect their own interests. So what's important here is that they came in, they got rid of all the coal-fired uh, plant of, uh, generators, which means that, you know, there's no more smog days, there's no more blackouts, it's a more reliable system, it's a reliable grid, that means it's, it's we can rely on it when we turn that switch on, the hydro will come. And we also don't have kids with asthmatic problems going into our emergency, costing our healthcare billions of dollars because of smog. So okay. what we have to we remember... Have food to eat because of this. It's, it's important to put this in context. The family I met lives in a home without using... and they've tried as much as possible to conserve and still paying $400. The person was saying they're struggling to make ends meet to put food on the table. So health concerns have been at trust, but it's important for us to realize what kind of impact this has on seniors who cannot afford to stay in their homes. And they could have interest-free so loans at the Bank of Canada. can't afford to stay in their homes because of hydro rates. So, it, so it, things it, are so terrible. So saying that we have the uh, NDP concerned so much about, about the poor and the people like that, you know. I mean, the, one of the problems that we have is uh, we have uh, 
uh, the prices of homes are, and there's so much, there's only so much condo space because we have green areas. There's a green belt area that they cannot build in because it's all area that's off for limits for building. So you have artificially low, uh, art, uh, only a small area to build your your homes on, and then their prices will go up. That's supply and demand. It's it's the it's the government. Uh, attitude of the NDP, the Conservatives even, and the Liberals that are, are causing this problem. Like, I'm not denying that you know it's important to feed kids. And growing up uh, for a single mother in an immigrant family, I know what it's like to make ends meet. And my mother was working three jobs at, at, at times to make ends meet at home. I know what it's like. And that's why I said earlier, there are programs that help support families in need to, to assist them with those oh, items. Yeah. And that's important. Just I think that's the form, sir. Wait. And, and, and they created the solution. And, and, programs and, and, to and, help and families. I think, <laughs> I think, I think, I think, All they did was grow the size and, of the government. And let me correct the record on that. It's not the government that sets the hydro prices. We all know that it's an independent, it's a deep that's, size process. That's not true. That, that that's, is the that's Ontario not energy. true. Well, that is true. No, it's, it's, it's a deep size process. They are an arm of government. This is a perfect no. example of liberal leadership and Kathleen Wynne not taking responsibility for a huge problem. As you mentioned, hydro rates and car insurance is a huge problem in my right. Every house is struggling. And even if they're middle income. And you have to take responsibility. You have you can't point fingers to the 13 years before Mike Harris or to say, you know, we have no control over or the price. Or to the NDP. The <laughs> and that's why Scarborough needs a fighter well, who can actually hold them accountable well, to these sorry, things. And who's better to fight for themselves? Well, let, let but the people. Apologies if taking <laughs> responsibility is making sure that our system's clean and our system's reliable. Sorry if it was taking responsibility is that we no longer have smog days and we have a reliable power grid. And also, how do we have taking, a reliable taking, power grid when we let, have windmills and let, solar panels? Let me finish. Let only, me, wind, only blow work when the wind is blowing let, and the sun is finish. shining. And taking responsibilities and looking after the families that need support we have by allowing between. those grants that are targeted at those who need the help. It's we all know that it's not the, the government that sets the price. It's a depoliticized process. So I'm not even sure why we're having this discussion with respect to government setting the prices. That's not true. Of course, it's the, the Ontario Energy the Board that is an arm's length agency that sets those prices up. Oh, so the, the shareholders the have received profit in the, in, the, in, the, in the last uh, while. The shareholders are wreaking profit because of the fact it's been sold. And that is not breaking down to everyday families. The hydro one needs to be stopped from being sold. It needs to be maintained and be in public hands. But That's they need the only money for other things. They don't want to go to the Bank of Canada. Have limited income to challenge the system. <laughs> we need the system to be public. We need the hydro to be in public hands so that we can at least have some form of accountability. Now, the short-sighted sale of hydro one needs to be stopped. And I think, I think the Kathleen Wynne government has no mandate before when they campaigned last election they had not mentioned any any anywhere in their platform that they want to sell off no mandate but they're still going ahead with selling it. Well, so let me do a show of hands who else agrees that it needs to be sh sold off versus continue with this plan who thinks that it should be sold off sell the whole thing sell the whole thing get, get it into private hands have competitive uh, bidding on on <clears throat> what on, on real i believe that Public utilities are great. I believe that restaurants should be independent and shoemakers and things like that. But national grids? He wants it run by a corporation? Prices for hydro. Or instead of, instead of, and to clarify, they're selling the off Green 6 Energy Act, not which by the way controls the Ontario Energy Board which he says is, a, is, a, is not an arm of government. It's controlled by the legislation called the Green Energy Act. The Green Energy Act says that at certain times of day when the wind is blowing, you should turn off the hydro and let the wind power do the work. Well, hydro is green too. So is nuclear green. There's no, no need to, to, to have windmills and solar panels and biomass free Literally, they waste money. They, they take up less than, oh, a, a fraction, about 20% of our bill, and they produce only 4% of our power. And that's why the bills have been going up. It's called Carbon's global cheaper, adjustment. Yeah, but the, it's still the good government to has made a contract with, uh, with corporations, and they pay this much, even though the price of hydro is four cents. And actually, it's been going down because the price of natural gas has been dropping like a rock. And instead of the price, instead of taking advantage of the low price of natural gas, we're going ahead and using windmills and solar power, which we're paying the Samsung Corporation a huge amount of money for. Let's let's take a step back here. Let's let's look at this. The Hydro One still largely owned by public 
shareholders. That's important to remember here. Only a portion of Hydro One is sold. And you know what? Those revenues are very important to ensure that yeah. our infrastructure is continued to build. They important need to sell health off infrastructure. Important health to build infrastructure. You need to sell yeah. stuff the, to finance your infrastructure. Well, you're unlocking the value of a public <laughs> asset, and you still have. And it's not like during the Harris government days where we, you know, mistakenly sold the 407 and completely sold. And, Left it to the private sector. John this Robart's is, had this, no trouble financing this is, stuff. This is still control, <laughs> shareholders are controlled by the public, and uh, and we have to remember these is important infrastructure investment are coming as a result of the revenue. Otherwise, what's the other plan? Right? What are we going to raise taxes? Are we going to raise taxes? What's the other plan? We're not going to go to the Bank of Canada for interest-free loans. We got to need another plan for investment. <laughs> Robots used to. Mr. Termel, yes. I expect you to be more polite than that. Oh, can't. This is so retarded. If you are going to be speaking that way, you will be asked to leave. Please at least be polite and respectful. Well, that is it's so not a request, it is a demand. All right. They want to sell stuff to get investment funds Even when it could go to the Bank of Canada? That's a dumb statement. I, 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 it is. Are you going to ask, have. Am I going to have to stop this and, and get you escorted no. out? No. Then don't I mean, be I mean, disrespectful. Well, I have to. Thank you. I have to. <laughs> Nathan Shen. The sell off of hydro is going to take off public input from the thing. That's, that's, that's an understood thing. And to, to hear a liberal candidate talk about it not being, it still being under public control. Am I supposed to respect the arguments that we got to find interest bearing investments and avoid using the Bank of Canada with respect? Can't. It's too retarded. <laughs> it's completely false. The second thing is that it's not going to even meet a small percentage of infrastructure investment that we need. This is very short-sighted. It's, it's selling something that is necessary for our, our affordable hydro. It's a human rights issue. Affordable hydro is a health issue. You cannot sell that to private interest to make profits out of the situation that is happening right now. So I, I strongly oppose it. I think it's, it's, it's a wrong move to do. And the Liberal Party better recognize this soon enough before it becomes like a four or seven situation in the, in the people who live in it's the, government, it's the government that's caused the uh, prices to triple in the last uh, 10 or uh, ten years or so. I mean, it's the government involvement that's caused the prices to go up. All, all governments, what the NDP, the Conservatives, and the Liberals have been in, in favor of, of, sorry, of uh, sorry, price sir. restrictions. Why, why do you think that is, though? All the, experts, the independent experts says, please do not sell Hydro One. Once Hydro One, over 60% sold, the government has no control. To, uh, in terms of controlling price, and uh, the bottom line is the average well, family suffer. The they only the pay more than $1,000 uh, after the, uh, this uh, liberal government. So the best solution is uh, not to sign any more contract uh, for energy, uh, alternate energy. And uh, the final solution is changeable government. All right, That's I'm going to why... stop this conversation now so we can get another question in. We're going to turn to health care. Raymond Chan, I'm going to start with you. The question is, do you think health care is under attack in Scarborough, in the Rouge River riding? What steps would you take to improve under attack in your community? <laughs> yeah, so that's an is health care uh, under attack? Last week, I had a visit to Rouge Valley Hospital, I mean, Centenary Hospital. And this, uh, for example, ER, uh, they designed in 1973 for 25,000 visitors. Today, they are treating 65,000 visitors, and I see that the best in the corridor is really underserved. This is another sign that how the Liberal government has uh, uh, ignored the Scarborough. Okay, that's uh, time. We'll, we'll continue the discussion. Preandu under attack. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, professional in, the, in uh, the medical industry that I've spoken to relates health to food. And food security is a, is a big deal in Scarborough Rouge River. Uh, the Green Party of Ontario wishes That's to important. ensure that uh, food is provided uh, through ensure. Uh, food initiatives uh, that provide nutrient-dense, uh, locally uh, grown, uh, Once they come culturally the appropriate money. food. And that will uh, give better health effects for individuals. Yeah. All right, Dwight McLean. Healthcare definitely is an important issue in our community, <laughs> and I see well. You see, like diseases are propping up every every so often. Like, for example, like the uh, upcoming school season, you see like uh, vaccinations are being uh, uh, stations are being uh, posted everywhere, and it's it's just a matter of time before we have like a situation where where uh, what's it called Z Zika Zika virus, and 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 other 
um, infestations in our city just manifest and become you know rampant within our city and just infecting everyone. So we need we need a, a viable That's situation. Time. Nathan Chen. Well, there is a silent crisis happening in our healthcare system. Our frontline staff and nurses are being fired. There is wait time. No money. In fact, Scarborough hospitals, the silent crisis is even more pronounced because of lack of leadership and the no bank of Canada money. And her liberals. The operating How rooms are sad. outdated with, uh, you know, uh, not, not been updated with new technology. So uh, we are fighting to make sure that Scarborough hospitals get their fair share uh, as resources. He's to make fighting. sure that, uh, that somebody is there to fight to advocate for more nurses and to reduce the wait times. Wait. Shortages is an inevitable uh, short wait time. Uh, outcome of having a monopoly on health, um, sick care, really. It's a misnomer to call it health care, really sick care when you need it. That's when you need it. And the problem is, is that the government is not allowing uh, the Ontarian, Ontarians to actually opt out of the OHIP system and then choose a private uh, system or yeah, a public system. So many poor they people have a choice, either out. OHIP or a private health insurer. Or they should be if able to If you got the money, you should be able to get choice, out. Yeah, uh, you go, freedom. You know, hospital as you go. The, the idea is to Don't put fix the, the system uh, with in the loans. hospitals and the health insurance companies in a competitive structure That's so that time. competition will Alan bring out efficiency. I agree with Wayne that in the most recent statistics show that 26,000, over 26,000 people left Ontario for better, faster health care in another place. Outside of Canada, they went to the United States, to Europe, to South Asia. There, they paid for hotel expenses, of course, their flight. All of that, 26,000 people left Ontario. Imagine how many jobs that could create if those people could stay here in Ontario if doctors were allowed to opt out of the system. You could choose between That's the public time. system. Here we go. Here. As a son of an aging mother at home and as someone who has supported the Centenary Hospital, I completely understand the value and importance of good health care services. And you know, it's false to say that liberal government has ignored struggle. Value. In fact, I, two weeks ago I was at Taibu Community Center where it's providing essential, culturally sensitive health care services in the community and it's being well used. And we also know that the government is coming in with $10 million Something's working. This part of this year to increase efficiency in our local hospital. And those are the types of investments that I stand for and that I want to Those are the type of investments he doesn't mind paying interest and for. And of course, I want the kind of investments you get interest free from the Bank of Canada, <laughs> like the successful people in Argentina did when six provinces started paying all employees with provincial bonds instead of borrowing from the banks and taxing them to pay interest. Full employment pay off the foreign debt. Is it not getting through? Not to them, for sure. Ain't it getting through to you? It worked for them. We had an interest-free window at the Bank of Canada. We could again. Queen you. Kathleen Wynne's sex ed curriculum doesn't mention love or marriage. When you separate sex from love, you ultimately have a broken heart, or two broken hearts. The result is trust issues. And subsequent relationships are less uh, deep. So without meaningful relationships, depression is around the corner. Our children's mental health is at stake. <laughs> Feeling pretty good before around the corner, <laughs> though. <laughs> much of our tax money gets wasted. So everything is interconnected. This question ties into other questions. To have money for health care, and I personally have waited over eight hours in Scarborough General. In and the you deserve to wait some thing. more if you don't want bank accounts. So to I know about it. waiting time. You know, and we could be doing better with more technology. And if we had the money that we hadn't wasted, say a billion dollars on some gas plants we never got, we could use that for health care. Oh, if we yeah. weren't wasting money by paying other countries to buy our excess electricity and using money. it for ammonia storage here, Greg Vesna, the leader of the that. That's uh, time. Your bar party um, like there's another oh, leader. <laughs> like a survey, Scarborough has been ignored in terms of getting proper attention for health care. For example, you have the same in speech a with the long subway. <laughs> care bed, the waiting time in, uh, in Ontario is 83 days. It's like uh, less than three months. But in Scarborough, the long-term care bed waiting time is uh, almost five years. It shows. Now, Last seven years, uh, the provincial uh, liberal government didn't increase any budget for uh, capital budget and uh, even operating budget, and they never allocate any capital budget for Scarborough. What does it mean? They are saying that a lot of people are concerned that the Grace Hospital may be closed. So the so service of healthcare we're getting in Scarborough is a really uh, 
underserved than people are really concerned. Now, a couple of years ago, they reduced $50 million for physiotherapy for the seniors, and uh, they reduced the 50 uh, residents. Uh, at the present time, almost uh, 1 million Ontarians, they don't even have family doctors. So, you know, they just keep cut, 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 and especially Scarborough. So, liberal government, they've been take, taking Scarborough just for granted. They're going to vote for us anyway. But it's not going to happen this well, time, Mr. because Chow, people Mr. Chow, understand it the, now. It's, it, I understand that, the, 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 uh, that it was the Progressive Conservative Party that actually brought for, uh, socialized medicine in the province of Ontario in 1969. They also introduced the uh, provincial income tax. But well, it was interest free. And, 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 the, and the, the fact of the matter is, the system has, uh, Tommy Douglas even realized back at one, uh, that the system is going to be chronically underfunded. It's, it's the, uh, chronically underfunded. Underfunded. It's going to create a situation where people need to use, uh, go into the hospital for all types of reasons. There needs to be prices. There needs to be competition among various well, that will uh, help come model, up with not enough. Private health insurers and not the U.S. models because the U.S. models has the insurance companies in bed with the, uh, with the local, with the governments and create these massive packages for people to buy. And that's, that is not a good model either. But the idea is competition will, will bring down uh, wait times, will uh, accre increase efficiencies, and increase uh, technology. It is the conservatives who constantly capitulate constantly capitulate to the left. And it is it is time for those who support free markets to support a party that supports that view and to abandon the conservative party. Progressive conservative, come on. Do you understand what the word progressive means? Do you understand the history? You don't. Leave the party and join the party that recommends it. You know, the health care system is being nickel and dimed to death. There's been a, the, the doctors have been without a contract for over two years now. And the, this is still going on, and Mr. Hoskins, the minister, or doc, sorry, Dr. Hoskins, the minister, keeps trying to find ways to cut doctors, to, to uh, delist services. The problem is the healthcare system needs to be expanded. People my age are going to need healthcare, and very soon, maybe today. And, and so you have to, you have to. Let's hope not. <laughs> let's hope not. But but the system needs to be expanded. The only way it can be expanded is for people, doctors, to be allowed to opt out of the program. Nathan, I'm going to give you the last word. We're wrapping up this question. So I, I think it's important to consider the funding cuts that have taken in the healthcare system. Oh, yeah. Freezing hospital funding, funding has led to finding ways to cut staff, cut technology, and so on. That is what is the crisis right now we're facing. The Catalinian and the Liberals have ignored the healthcare system and let it deteriorate. The, the way they have handled the doctor's issue is a perfect example. Breaking the trust, not respecting the role they do. So it's important for us to have a fighter. Thanks, Councillor Cho, for all the outlining of the issues, but Scarborough needs a fighter. Scarborough needs a fighter who can actually hold the government accountable and get the thing fighter for our hospital. Scarborough has not been ignored. In fact, if you look at the 2015 numbers, we've had a 14% increase in doctors, and I value the service that doctors provide. And I understand that there's a negotiation going on. Yeah, I think it's appropriate for us to comment on it when the doctors as so is going through that negotiation. But there has been increase in nurses since the Liberal government took power. In fact, over 3,000 nurses. So let's set the record straight here. I have to end the discussion right here. Uh, we are going to go to the last part of this debate, which is our final summations. Uh, thank you very much for such a lively discussion. It has gone by very quickly um, regarding the issues of Scarborough Rouge River. So for your closing statements, you each have 30 seconds. None of the above. I will start with you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, you've heard what the big party candidates have said, and if you pick one of them, you'll probably wind up with more of the same. If you want to choose a difference, if you want to see things change, if you want to see new ideas, someone will bring something new to the table and speak up instead of sitting back and being a good backbencher for the parties and only doing what you're told. And if you'd like to be someone like that, you vote for me, none of the above and the none of the above party. Queenie, you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you don't like me or you don't like what I have to say and you really want to punish me, then elect me and send me down to Queen's Park and that will be tough for two years, but I'll keep fighting for you. Vote for me. I'm not as bad as the other guys. By election, the Liberals will still be in power. So if you're not happy with the Liberals, don't waste your vote on the NDP or the PCs because they'll still be in the opposition. Instead, use your vote to send a message to all the parties. Tell the Liberals and NDP they will not have your vote in 2018 because they support the sex ed curriculum. Tell the PCs that they will only have your vote if you vote if they vote against 
the sex ed curriculum. Please vote for Queen U, independent candidate. Like John Chanel. Well, I'm in the Guinness Book of Records for running in the most elections contested and the most losses. So I've been made fun of, but the question is, smartestmanonearth.ca, it's either true, and you're the dummies for not voting for me, or I'm the dummy. But I think if you listen to how I can get you back the 70,000 bucks you've been ripped off, and you don't want it back, you're the dummies, not smartestmanonearth.ca. This is an important election and you have two choices. You can either elect one of my professional politicians right here beside me and allow them to sit on the sidelines outside yelling at the government and yelling at the media, or you can allow me to represent you at Queen's Park. Someone who has lived the life that you have gone through the same challenges and barriers that many families in Scarborough have faced. That's not a news story to Scarborough, but it certainly is a news story in Queen's Park, and that needs to be heard. And I ask for your opportunity to be your MPP so we can continue to invest in good health care, good transportation infrastructure for Scarborough. Continue to invest in pay interest. In Thank you, Alex. The liberals. <clears throat> My thanks to Rogers for this opportunity. Remember, if you like higher taxes, carbon taxes, expensive hydro bills, more revenue tools, more regulations, and fewer jobs, vote for these guys. If you want someone to fight against all of those things, yeah. vote for me. Yeah. Alex yeah. Small, the Ontarian Party, change the way Ontario thinks. We need money, Find not us on fight. Facebook and explore new possibilities. Oh, but not bank account loans. Other new Stop possibilities. Stop voting for the smug Looking of the for new party. possibilities. That Liberal Party candidate just insulted the two candidates who are next to him. They're and that is just absolutely wrong. We need a, a representative in Parliament uh, that will respect oh, and actually advocate insulting. for freedom, individual liberty, the life, liberty and property, the protection of life, liberty and property. Freedomparty.ln.ca is our website. Don't vote for the fake, false conservatives, the PCs who are not offering choice. Find an alternative. Freedomparty.ln.ca. We're also on YouTube. That's, that's Thank fine. you. Nathan Shen. I'm Nathan Shan. I'm your NDP candidate. I live in Scarborough Woods River. I work in Scarborough Woods River. Notice I didn't mention my name and my party because it's right there. <laughs> I want to be a fighter for you. Fight for lower insurance, car fight, insurance, fight, lower hydro yes. rates. I want to fight to bring the subway built soon. I want to fight for good local jobs. Yes. Scarborough has been neglected by Kathleen Wynne and the Liberals. We have been disappointed by the broken promises of Kathleen Wynne. So let's send her a message, clear message, strong message on September 1st. Vote for Nathan Shan, your NDP candidate in Scarborough Roots River. How belly calls really wants to okay, fight. Thank you. I'd like to thank you, Cynthia, all the candidates here, Rogers Studio. I'd like to say that uh, we're called the people, the local party, because why? We, you are the people, right? You elect yourselves. Who better can do a job who's more trustworthy and reliable, who can get the job done better than yourselves, right? That's what the People's Party stands for, that's the backbone of the People's Party. If you, if you elect the three major governments, you're just doing the same thing over and over, again and again and again. They say that uh, insanity is just repeating itself over and over. You vote the three parties, I'm you're sorry, done. I'm sorry, your time's up. Priya, vote for me, I'm not them. <laughs> Thank you for having this debate. Thanks, Vic. Thanks, my parents. My name is Priyanka Soba. I'm running for the Green Party of Ontario in this upcoming Scarborough Woods River by-election. We're here to solve the root issues, root problems of all the issues, which is access to food security. We all eat. Yeah. Access to energy independence. We should be in charge of our own en energy. And finally, a basic income that will provide dignity <laughs> to all facets of, facets of people in, in, in their life. Vote Priyanka Silva. Vote for Green Party. We're here. Thank you. And Raymond Chow. Yes. Life is harder on the win liberals. As your MPP, I will continue to fight for Scarborough as I've been doing for the past 25 years as your city councillor. I will fight for one, affordable hydro, two, Scarborough service, three, quality health care and education, and four, good paying jobs. Things he we wants. We definitely need change for better Scarborough. On September 1st, please go out and vote for Raymond Cho. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you all very much for joining us here this evening. And thank you for joining us. For a repeat schedule of this debate, you can visit rogerstv.com. And that is, I'm sorry, that is rtv.rogers.com. I'm Cynthia Mulligan. Good night. All right. I always wonder 
What goes on in the brains of my opponents who keep saying, we need investments, we need investments, we don't have enough, we got to sell this because we need investments. And then you tell them about the Bank of Canada interest-free window used by the John Robarts government until Pierre shut it down. You know, it goes in one ear and out the other. We need investments. Wow. It does kind of show that Jesus was absolutely right when he said that dealing with mammon, they will forever be hearing without hearing and seeing without seeing or understanding. And we've seen about as much retardation <laughs> and dummies as we could have imagined here today. And I wonder how many of the voters I'm going to be able to call dummies for not voting for me. Well, actually, a lot of them don't even know I'm there. They're not going to watch this Rogers debate thousand, maybe. So, that's it. Let's see what happens Thursday. Now, i got to get my... All right. Just move it down a little bit.